Hey guys, welcome to the awakening. Um, what if you actually get up and you don't want to do anything? You don't want to do the light work that you feel you are put here to do. You have had a really difficult night where you felt ill. You get emails from people telling you that what you're putting out is rubbish, particularly people that you respect and they have evidence that it's rubbish and yet your gut tells you it's not. And anyway, we're here to explore. Um, and there's very little love around you at this moment. You wake up and you're on your own. You feel, you just feel completely alone and you feel like, I can't do it today. I can't do it today. Now, lots of you must be waking up like that, the way I woke up today. I just can't do it. I don't want to do it today. So don't. So don't. You see, that's the misconception. The misconception is that you have to do anything. No one told you that you have to do anything. You know, when I studied the Course in Miracles, I learned that nothing or anyone, Jesus or, you know, no one, God, told us that we have to do anything. We, our job is to be happy. Our job is to be peace, peaceful and calm and happy. That's it. You don't have to do anything. Today, I'm in child mode, and this is Myrtle. Myrtle Fillmore, my bunny. I named her after Myrtle Fillmore, the healer. The healer who healed herself when everybody said that she wouldn't, that she couldn't. <laughs> she's falling apart and she's old. <laughs> Look at her. But she is my comfort zone, my comfort bunny. And today I feel about five years old. I feel alone. I feel abandoned. I feel sad. And I feel like I can't be bothered. <laughs> I just can't be bothered. I can't get Adobe to work properly to do the editing of my programs. Uh, and as I say, you, I woke up and there were these emails that I really didn't want to see. Where's the lottery grant? Why is it taking so long to get the money? Yada, yada, you know? The ego is happy to go on and on and on and on. That's the darkness, my darlings. But when I go outside, I see a beautiful blue sky with little puffy clouds and a beautiful sun shining down on top of me without any chemtrails. And then I open... A Course in Miracles, and it says, I am among the ministers of God of love. Let us today be neither arrogant nor falsely humble. We have gone beyond such foolishness. We cannot judge ourselves, nor need we do so. These are but attempts to hold decision off and to delay commitment to our function, which is to be happy. It is not our part to judge our worth, nor can we know what role is best for us. What we can do within a larger plan we cannot see in its entirety. Our part is cast in heaven, not in hell. And what we think is weakness can be strength. What we believe to be our strength is often arrogance. Whatever your appointed role may be, it was selected by the voice for God, for love, whose function is to speak for you as well, seeing your strengths exactly as they are. 
and equally aware of where they can be best applied. But what to whom and when? He chooses and accepts your part for you. He does not work without your own consent. We do not consent. But he is not deceived in what you are and listens only to his voice in you. Is it through his ability to hear one voice, which is his own, that you become aware at last there is one voice in you? And that one voice appoints your function and relays it to you, giving you the strength to understand it, do what it entails, and succeed in everything you do that is related to it. God has joined his son in this. His son becomes his messenger of unity with him. His son, you, his daughter, me. It is this joining to the voice for God or love of father and son or daughter that sets apart salvation from the world. It is this voice which speaks of laws the world does not obey, which promises salvation from all sins with guilt abolished in the mind that God love created sinless. Now this mind becomes aware of who created it and of his lasting union with itself. So it itself, the one reality in which its will and that of love God are joined. A messenger is not the one who writes the message he delivers, nor does he or she question the right of him who does, nor ask why he or she has chosen those who will receive the message that he or she brings. It is enough that he or she accept it, give it to the ones for whom it is intended and fulfill its or role in its delivery. So my job as a messenger is to give the messages, not to think about them, not to dwell on whether they are true or not, but to give the messages as a media company to send out the messages of other people's truth for you to decide. A messenger is not the one who writes the message, as I said. It is enough that he or she accept, give it to ones for whom it's intended and fulfill his or role in its delivery. If he or she determine what the messages should be or what their purpose is or where they should be carried, he or she is failing to perform his or her proper part as a bringer of the word. So if I decide what is true and what isn't true, I'm not giving others the chance to express their truth. There is one major difference in the role of heaven's messengers, which sets them off from those the world appoints. The messages that they deliver are in turn to first for them. And it is only as they can accept them for themselves that they become able to bring them further and to give them everywhere that they were meant to be. I cannot teach you to come into the light until I am able to come into the light. I cannot teach you what is good and what is not good for us until I am able to feel in my heart exactly what is true and what isn't. But I can give other people's truth. Like earthly messengers, they did not write the messages they bear, but they become their first receivers in the truest sense, receiving to prepare themselves to give. An earthly messenger fulfills his role or her role by giving all the messages away. This is perfect. This is a course in miracles and it's answering my question. The messengers of love perform their part by their acceptance of his or her messages as for themselves. I'm sure they understand the messages by giving them away. They choose no roles that are not given them by his or her authority. And so they gain by every message they give away. Would you receive the messages of love? For thus do you become his or her messenger. You are appointed now, and yet you wait to give the messages you have received. And so you do not know that they are yours and do not recognize them. No one can receive and understand he has received until he gives. For in the giving is his own acceptance of what he receives. I give out what I'm receiving, and then it's up to you to make your decisions. Don't turn against me. I am a messenger. For he, you are now the messenger of love. 
Receive as messages, that is part of your appointed role. Love has not failed to offer what you need, nor has it been left unaccepted. Yet another part of your appointed task is to be yet accomplished. He who has received for you the messages of love would have them be received by you as well. For thus do you identify with him and claim your own. This is very long. Amen. We practice giving him what he would have, that we may recognize his gifts to us. He needs our voice that he may speak through us. He needs our hands to hold his messages and carry to those whom he wills, for those who wait in misery may be at last delivered. And he or she needs our will and united with his own, that we may be the true receivers of the gifts he gives. Let us but learn this lesson for today. We will not recognize that we receive until we give it. You have heard this said a hundred ways a hundred times. Yet yeah, belief is lacking still. But this is sure, until belief is given, you will receive a thousand miracles and then receive a thousand more. But we'll not know that God himself has left no gift beyond what you already have, nor has denied the tiniest of blessings to a son or daughter. What can this mean to you until you have identified with him and with his own? Our lesson for today is thus. I am among the ministers of love. I am grateful that I have the means by which to recognize I am free. The world recedes as we light up our minds and realize these holy words are true. They are the message sent to us today from our creator. Now we demonstrate how they have changed our minds about ourselves and what our function is. For as we prove that we accept no will, we do not share. Our many gifts from our creator will spring to our sight and leap into our hands and we will recognize what we received. Thank you. I love you. I'm among the ministers of love. I am grateful I have the means by which to recognize I am free. And so I am allowed to give you the messages that I believe may be true. And then if you want to come and debate that they're not, then we'll do it in front of the public and we'll be on TV. That's my answer. And that is the answer, I think. I have an idea. Let's get the debate going. Please bring on that group. And we can debate with Mark Steele. What is really going on? I'm open to this. Are they? There we go. Uh, moving on TV, we'll bring on different groups and it's very happy to. Okay, let's have a look at how to stay sane in a crazy world. So basically, we need another debate. Another debate as well. With you, Mark, and this group. Let's see, Mark. Yeah, we need another debate and then we can see what the truth is and the and uh, the public can make their own decisions. Okay, how about that? I shall ask Mark about this. How to stay sane, meditation. Today I'm going to do some meditation. I'm letting go today, I'm meditating for the amount of time I can as I know this will benefit me and make me more aware and awake. Meditation today, guys, you need to meditate. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to contact Mark Steele. I'm going to put out 
the debate we've done, and I'm going to ask for another one with this other group. They call themselves something, the Cosmos, UKCosmos.org. Take care, love you lots, have a beautiful day.